Good morning. Can you all hear me okay? How's everyone feeling? Ready to start the day and learn a lot? I love it. Well, we're going to take a few minutes and do something that we don't always do as adults, and we're going to use our imagination. So each of you have your three post-it notes in your material, so you're going to go ahead and take those out and make sure that you have them handy. So let's pretend for a moment, let's pretend it's 3 a.m. on a brisk, cold morning, kind of like this morning. You're peacefully asleep and warm in your bed at home. Suddenly, there is a loud and urgent sound knocking on the door. You rush to open it, confused, half asleep, and more than likely concerned. When you answer the door, there's an official standing there who announces there's been a severe gas leak in the neighborhood. You have to leave your home immediately. But you're told that there's a nice, comfortable charter bus that's going to take you to a luxury hotel about an hour away until you can return safely to your home. The bus is going to arrive in two minutes. The entire neighborhood has been impacted, so everyone in the community has to leave to avoid the danger. They have repeatedly tried to reach your extended family members in the next town over, but no one's responding. After all, it's three in the morning. So you must leave on the bus. And the person tells you that although the bus is really nice and comfortable, there are space limitations. So you can only bring three things with you. You have to quickly decide on the most three precious things that you have, the three things that mean the most to you in the world. So take those three post-it notes and quickly write one precious thing on each one of your post-it notes. It can be anything you decide. It could be your spouse. That's probably a pretty important one. Your dog, your toothbrush. But hurry because time is of the essence. As you get on the bus, you're wishing you'd brought a pillow, but that wasn't one of the things you wrote down. About an hour outside of the town, you learn that the leak is much worse than expected, and now you'll have to travel even farther away from your home. As you continue on the even longer journey, the nice, comfortable bus gets a flat tire. Off the bus you go. Now you have to wait in the chilly air for two smaller buses. There's a lot less room on the smaller buses, so unfortunately you have to get rid of one of your precious items. So go ahead and pick one and crumble or tear it up. How does that make you feel to leave that precious thing behind? After about an hour, you stop for breakfast at Chick-fil-A. When you come back outside, someone has vandalized all of the buses. Every single window is smashed. You wait until much smaller vans come to pick you up. But these vans have no storage area, so you will have to get rid of a second precious thing. It might be hard to choose between the two, but you must select one. Rip it, crumble it up, or throw it away. Now take a minute and think about how you feel leaving behind that second precious thing and now only having one remaining. You travel a total of three more hours and pull into an old, musty, and dimly lit community center. Not a nice hotel. What happened to the luxury hotel? There's a short line outside and a sign on the wall says you may not bring any belongings with you, just yourself and the clothes on your back. So now you must throw away the last precious item that you've been holding on to. Now 
now think how you are feeling. You don't even have one of your most precious things now. Further imagine that you carry the feeling with you as you enter into a strange building and sit on an uncomfortable chair. Everything is unfamiliar, cold, and sterile. You carry this feeling while you see people scurrying about on their phones. They don't tell you anything, but you figure out that they are trying to find a place for you to stay. You have no idea who they are talking to, and you wonder why are they even having to make the calls in the first place. You overhear similar words, oh, I understand, I'll try another place. You feel afraid, alone, and you keep thinking about how quickly you lost everything you've ever known. Welcome to foster care. Although this is a simulation, it often happens that children come quickly, unprepared, and without much of anything to their names. They have left their family behind, maybe their pets, and maybe their most precious belongings. Even when they come into care with a few precious items, oftentimes when being moved from one place to the next, those precious items get lost. I want to share something here about myself. So when I went into foster care, I was uh, three days old, and my birth name was Carrie Hope. And I got to that first foster home, and the social worker said, it's a 99% chance that you're going to be able to adopt Carrie. And so what did they do? They changed my name. They changed my name to Teresa Kathleen. And for two years, I was called Teresa Kathleen, or TC as a nickname. Cute, right? Well, two years later, I was reunified with my birth family. And when I was reunified with my birth family, they wanted to call me by my birth name, Carrie Hope. So they told me how it took some time to retrain me to respond to Carrie Hope again, right? It's like changing a dog's name after two years. And years later, I was at church. I was an adult now, and I asked someone on the prayer team to pray for me, a stranger. I didn't give any details. I didn't even tell them my name. I just said I needed prayers for stuff that I had been dealing with from my childhood. And so this woman lays her hands on me, and she starts to pray, and she says, you are not meant to carry these burdens. You are meant to carry hope. And that is my birth name. And that is something that it's, when we talk about precious things, sometimes you don't even get to keep your name in these situations. So what did you feel when you had to crumble up and let go of your precious things? What are the, some of the things that you had to leave behind? Was it family? Was it your spouse? Was it your kids? Children are separated from their parents and extended family, and oftentimes siblings get split up. Did anyone list God or faith as one of their precious things? Our faith cannot be discarded, and it's something that can't be taken away from these children. The unwavering love of God is a constant that they can carry with them wherever they go. You know, in that moment when that woman prayed over me, that's what I was confirmed with, that God had a name for me, it was Carrie Hope, and he had a plan for my life. And that foster care was a part of that plan so that I could be standing here before you all telling you this testimony so that you can join me in stepping into these stories of frightened, lonely, and uncertain children. That's where you come in. Because when we begin to support and care for God's most vulnerable children and families in different ways, you can make a difference that goes, far beyond what you will likely ever be able to see. So not everyone in here today will or even should foster or adopt, but all of us can do something to make a difference. Our individual contributions may be small, but nothing is insignificant. When we all become part of that solution, the collective impact can be tremendous. So we hope that this exercise is something that you don't quickly forget. We hope that it has helped you to better understand the why we need to positively impact children and their families. It's a both and. It's not just about the kids. It's about their families, too. That's the vision of God. So the answer to many of the challenges in foster care is a simple one. It's you. Thank you all.